Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are focusing on the RS125. Now, I did post this a while ago. Um, I think at least, at least I think I did. Um, it was really crusty. I've used a wire wheel and some wire wool to try and clean up the casing. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get that out. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but there is a, a tiny little clip on there. For some reason, I can't seem to unpry it. Why won't it focus? There. Now I've got to get that out. Then I could get this bar out and clean it properly. But um, it's going to need a lick of paint and it needs some welding here. Aluminium welding. It's got a crack in there. But all this does is covers the stator. And what I'll do is I'll show you the stator in a moment because really that makes no difference. This, on, a, on the other hand, does. See, look, massive crack, massive chunk taken out of that. So if anyone knows, uh, or anyone out there who is able to weld aluminium, please let, please get in touch and let me know and see if you, you know, help me out if you can. It would be, really, I'd be really grateful. So, yeah, the plan basically was to fit this one onto the bike, take the casing off the other side of the bike and fit the gasket, but can't find the gasket, so I've ordered one from my local bike shop. So that should be here fairly soon, but yeah, I need to get this back up to uh, really shiny and nice. I've seen videos on YouTube, but um, I don't think I've got the skills for doing that, or the patience, to be honest, because it looks like a long-winded job. So if anyone can help me out, please let me know. Thank you. Anyway, what I need to do is these, there's four holes on this one. There's one, two, and there's two there. And a casing goes on there on top. Um, I've seen a few online, but they're not cheap. But the threads are all corroded. So what I need to do, yes, as far as it goes, I can't get it any further than that. So I need to clean all these threads up. And then I need to find out where all the bolts go on the actual engine. I ordered a, I ordered a set of uh, stainless bolts, which came through really quickly, which is brilliant. And they were local, which is really, really good. Um, so, yeah, next thing you'll see is the bike itself. Here is the 125, called Buddy. Now, um... This bike has been left alone for quite some time. Unfortunately, it needs a lot of work. Um, if you go back through the history of this bike, I've got, I've, I've got a, um, a set of videos on this a little play stream thing. Um, I need to get a new welder so I can fix up the seat base and then I can get the seat reupholstered. And I'm gonna try and do that myself because I've still got the original sponge. Um, the engine itself, that is, uh, 125 bought out to a 175. I have replaced parts of the carburetor. Uh, it needed a spacer. Uh, I've got loads of other bits from it. I've got a wheel. I can't remember if it was the front or the rear. It came from the south of France quite some years ago now. Well, three, I think. Uh, the choke is missing from the carburetor because the bar inside was bent. The airbox tube, little tiny tube there, it is so rare. Uh, I saw one for sale with a carburetor, and that was for £50, and I couldn't justify it. Uh, and at the time, I didn't have a huge amount of money coming in due to no work uh, because of uh, lockdown. Anyway, what the plan is today, um, I'll try and keep the cover up, um, of course, is finding where all the Allen keys go, or all the bolts. So... There are quite a few. Oh, for God's sake. Hang on, one moment. That should hold it. Okay, so going back to what I was saying, um, we have all these bolts, which I've got off eBay, stainless steel, and they need to go in here. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use my tripod at the moment, so uh, it's going to be a case of guesswork. Well, doing it off camera. Um, there are quite a few different lengths so what it's going to be 
is a case of screwing it in. If it goes all the way, then I know it does, could fit. But I mean, that one could go in the hole for that one. And I wouldn't know until I found the hole for the the longer one, with the shorter one, by putting a longer one in and having more thread sticking out. These ones, this would be a casing screw because you've you've got the amount of space I would say it would it would go in there because once that screws in you've then got that that space there for the casing so that would be uh, I would say that would be correct in that position so I'm going to give that a try I'll give these holes a bit of a spray up and I'll uh yeah let's see what we can do hey everyone welcome back to the channel um, after that brief little interlude of me showing you that casing there um, and the casing on the other side um, we have a few things to do today so um, I'll just briefly uh, give you a quick rundown of this bike um, if I remember if memory serves me it's a 1983 or 1984 bike sorry for the wind noise everyone I may have to overdub. Um, yeah, recently got the engine casing, recently got the gasket for the other side. Uh, I decided to bolt on the um, chain guard, even though there's no chain, but it was just getting it out of the shed and on the bike and making it a little bit look a little bit more complete. Um, I have a can of oil down in that corner there. Now that came about yesterday. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a call uh, and said, look, he's having problems with his bike and uh, could I give him some help? So I got in the car, uh, drove over to where he was and found out that the um, spark plug cap on both sides, he has a twin cylinder Kawasaki. Uh, on the left hand side of the bike, the, the spark plug cap he put in was like stupidly long. I mean, stupidly long, and you could only just get it in between the top of the fuel tank there and the top of the engine. It's not like this bike; it's more modern. Um, anyway, um, I managed to get the spark plug cap out, and the whole end of it was completely shattered. Um, I'll go and grab mine so you, I can explain to you a bit more. Oh, sorry. This is a spark plug cap. Now, this is very short, obviously because it's a little bike, but the one on his, it's a, this is an NGK by the way, um, his was like four inches in length and the whole end of it was completely shattered and it didn't have this rubber boot. Now the rubber boot there is so it can hold on to the spark plug while it's in the top of the cylinder and it won't move, but his had no rubber boot, the end was all shattered and broken, and you could literally wobble it left and right on top of the spark plug so it was it was uh, it was not a consistent spark and resistance and everything else so he was having running issues so uh, we went to go to the nearest bike shop and we got two brand new ones NGK for his bike not as short as this though because it wouldn't have fit because his spark plugs are further down inside the top of the crank in top of the head anyway uh, because I'd helped him sort that out, he bought me some oil for this bike, which was awesome. And this is... I always use this for little my little bikes I've owned. Silkaline Gear Oil. Uh, SAA, SAE 80 for this bike. So, yeah, this is going to be going in the bike today. Um, I have the, the gasket for the other side of the bike as well. I've remembered my Allen keys because in the previous part of the video I couldn't find them. And also, there's a brake caliper you can just see there. I'll bring this over. Now, this is knackered basically. Um, and maybe not actually. Might be able to fix it. Um, the bleed nipple for the brake has been broken there. And it has been covered up with what looks like JB Weld. Um, but at the same time, the bar which goes on the um, the fork, which I'll show, show a close-up of earlier, which goes through this hole here, is extremely corroded and rusty. And if you look in there, there's the piston. 
I don't know if that's going to come out. So I'm going to get the airline on a compressor and try and push that out, see if it will move. But you've got to be careful with stuff like this. If you're going to do this, put some rags in here or wrap the entire thing in a pillow, which then, you know, you're not going to hurt yourself because when that flies out of there, they come out at a hell of a rate. And yeah, they can take your fingers off if you're not careful. If you've got your fingers in there and you're, you're, you've got air going into here, the pressure buildup is horrendous, is astonishingly powerful. So anyway, let's get the bike turned around so we can get the gasket on. There you go, that's a bit better. Put you on a uh, flatter surface so you don't wobble around. Okay. So, um, possibly a number of things are going to happen today. Um, I've just realised I'm missing a, a screw there. I think that would be for the oil pump. Um, just quickly I'll mention, um, when this was off I had it repaired, there was a crack in the top there, there was a crack in here, um, and I took out the dipstick, giggle, um, and I put it in a pot and misplaced it, and I was looking in the pot, couldn't see it, it's like you can't see wood for the trees, and all of a sudden stopped looking, and I looked back in the box and it was right in front of me, facing up. So. Yeah, let's put that, actually no, we need to take that out because the bolts which uh, hold the casing on, there's one in the way. Uh, shall I move you so you can see better? Let's see what we can do. Bike's going by taunting me. Right. Right. That's better. I've got to be careful, of course, because in the previous part of the video I mentioned that uh, when we take the engine casing off, we've got to be careful with the kickstart um, because the spring in there is loaded. Um, can I remember which Allen kit? No. Not good that time, was it? So these bolts are... They are 5 mil. So we need to crack these open. Oh, they're already uncracked. <laughs> well, that one's not. So, unfortunately, it's not in the greatest of condition, but you've got to work with what we've got. And this will clean itself up. I'll do a few oil changes. So, we have the gasket. It goes the other way around. Mirror image. So, flip it over and then you can't see it, but yeah. It uh, yeah should be all right. Um, hopefully, well, what I might have to do is put it on this side because there is you've got that dowel there and that dowel, so it'll have to go on here, and then I can put it in up to the engine. So let's place it down. 
Shame I can't move you really. That's awkward. I could try and hold the. Uh... Well, actually, no. I'll just place it and then show you. But I'll get a I'll get a rag and I'll clean up the the face on both the engine and the casing. Oh, while I'm here, just a quick shout out to Mr. Steve Benway. If you haven't seen Steve Benway's channel, it's very entertaining. Um, he does um, video games, um, but in a different kind of style. So uh, I will leave a link in the, the, the description. I will leave a link um, to his channel in the description. And if you are even partially interested in video games, check out his channel it's definitely worth a look and uh, he used to own an RS125 and uh, yeah he, uh, he's he been looking forward to seeing some content on this bike um, for quite some time and uh, personally I have been how, how can I put it neglecting this poor little bike Oh yeah, that's the oil pump. The seal still looks good on that. Yeah, that's still pretty good. Just giving the inside of this casing a wipe. Right. I think that'll do. You've got little worm gear in there as well for your speedo. Which I think is pretty cool. Right, gasket time I think, guys. Well, can I prop it there? Yeah, of course I can. It's not difficult. Actually, I'll get some... Hang on, let's get that on there. Let's clean out where the kickstart goes. It might need a new seal. If I do need a new seal, I'll drop the oil. And, uh, yeah, see what happens there. I'm hoping um, that when I turn the engine over it doesn't hit these welds, because that's the repair welds. Um, and there is, like, scoring in here from the end of the clutch. Um, but I think when I had the bike before, I don't think there was a gasket on this. I don't think so. But what we'll do is... Um, once we've got the oil in there, and the kickstart handle on there as well, we'll give it a few rotations, and if this does come in contact with the casing, we'll have to have a look at another issue, we'll have to look at something else, unless I try rotating it without the oil. It's not going to harm it. Um, I mean, I've, I've kicked this thing over numerous times without any oil in it, and it's, you know, it's not really caused an issue, and it just sounds fine, same as before. And getting this gasket is uh, thanks to the donations I've been getting. So, uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who has donated to the channel. Ooh. It's very kind of everyone who's done that. Right, okay, so that's okay, that's good. It's showing the pathway there so you can get the, oil, the tube through for the oil pump here. One thing I have decided to do with this bike as well, um, I think I've mentioned it in a previous part of the video, but the carburetor has a rubber tube that goes to the airbox. I'm going to have to bypass that because the part is so hard to come by. I'm going to put a, like a little, um, a little, it's like a cone filter um, because literally it's the only thing I can do. 
Oh, hang on. Let me wipe the... There we go. Let's wipe that off. Okay, that's uh, not in the best of condition. I think I will need to replace the um, the kickstart seal. We'll just, we'll just see what happens. I can see part of the spring on the inside has come away. We'll see what happens. If it drops, if it loses any oil, we'll just have to stop what we're doing. Where is the stump plug? There should be a stump plug. Yeah, before I put any oil in. Oh yeah, there it is. You can just see the edge of the thread there. So it's the sump plug is definitely in. Right, okay, let's pull that back up there. Let's get on with it. Like it's on. That looks good. Okay, let's put in middle top. You might have noticed that I did something wrong then. This, I took the case off again and put it back in. I'd forgotten completely to, uh, yeah, put the uh, oil pipe in. Right, okay, so, um, let's go back in now. And the wind just picked up. Yay! Um, right, I'm gonna go and see if we can find the oil pump for here, unless we don't need it. It's very possible. There uh, should be a bolt in there. Um, I'm going to dig one out because I don't think I've got the original one and it was a cross head anyway, like these. But let's see if I've got one in the, in the uh, packet. That bolt hole goes through the dowel on the other side of the casing and then into the engine itself. So I'm not overly sure. Yeah, it's going to be pretty long and I, I can't remember where the the Allen keys I bought for this. I don't know where I've put them. But that's not a, uh, a possible leakage issue. I'm going to get the kickstand, just temporarily put that on, turn it over and see if the clutch does hit the casing on the inside. We'll see. If that is the case, um, let's try and find another method. I just found Another engine bolt. Is that for the other side? Let's have a look. Hmm, possibly. There's nothing missing though, so I'll, I'll keep hold of that. Right, I'd say it goes about there. Unless it's for this. That could go through there, I'm sure. Very possible. Right. Oh, hang on. What am I doing? There's already one in there, look. How silly am I? Oh, it's a bigger Allen. Oh, don't need that at all. It's not even tight. A bit wet, though. And that's water, it's not oil. Okay, let's try that again. Right. 
There is no spark plug in the piston, uh, in the cylinder head, so let's turn this over and see if it turns. Oh, that sounds good. Nothing's hitting. That does sound good. Okay. Let's get this off. Makes it a bit easier if this is not here to fill up the engine with oil. I think I've gone and left my uh, funnel in the garage, but let's see what's in here, shall we? we might, there might be a funnel thing. But I highly doubt it. No. So what I do with this is I get a small Allen key or a small normal key. And what you do, if you want to pour oil in a small area, you make a very small hole there. So you can see that. Very small hole at the pour, pour end. And a hole on the other side so the air can get in. Which means you can then control the flow of oil. Kind of. It has been at least a decade since this bike has had oil in it. Don't worry about that oil there, it's only dripping off the casing. There's no glass window on these, so you've basically got to use the dipstick. So what I'll do is I'll stop there for a minute. Come on, stop, stop, stop. Wipe the casing and put the bike on its main stand. I should have thought to myself just now, put some, put a rag under the bike. But you know me, I forget these things. Right, need something to put underneath the stand. Wipe all that oil up. Don't really want, you know, engine oil on my patio. yourself out. There we go. That's it, so it's more level now. I don't know how much you can see now, because you might be too low. Oh no, no, you look fine. I'll just move you slightly. There we go. Okay, so just that curiosity. What you do, put it in, turn it, unlike a car, when you push it in and pull it back out again. You have to do that up and then undo it. So 700 cc's capacity oil. Tiny smidgen on the dipstick at the moment. I like that word, smidgen. Probably going to be easier to do it like this. There we go. This is very clear oil. Okay, let's stop. See how much we've got left. So 700 mil, so basically we need to put in enough so there's 300 mil left. It's quite a bit of oil really. Actually no, that's mil, not cc. What am I talking about? So this, this can of oil should last quite some time. Yep, there we go. Or do we? A little bit, it's difficult to see. Well, it's definitely got oil on the back of the dipstick. And, hang on, should I grab my, tor my phone? See, I'm going to shine a torch in there. That would be a first on this bike. Come 
I see oil. Can't feel anything right now. Maybe that's um, just. Uh, no, I can't feel anything when I put my finger into there. No, can't feel any oil at all. It's just on the casing, the inner inside of the casing, should I say? Let's put in more. But nothing is leaking out of the kickstart um, seal, so that's a good sign. Let's try this again. Should be really a dribble off the end of the dipstick when there's enough in there. 700 cc's. If anyone can tell me the calculations between that and regular oil, that's not really a Oh yeah, that's a dribble. Yeah, that's definitely a dribble on the end there. Let's try my finger again. No, nope. that's right up to my little my little knuckle, and I can't feel a thing. And that is roughly the same length. Maybe a bit. Yeah, dipstick's slightly longer than the little finger. Bit more. I wish there was a little window on these engines so you could actually see how much was in there. Oh, can't see a blooming thing with this torch. No, can't see a blooming thing. Let's try again. No, nope. it's just a more engine casing oil. Dipstick, again. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, I was going to say about this bike, the reason why it got its name um, is because it was owned uh, by my best friend years ago. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Um, and I bought the bike when he was with us. Um, he got a bit fed up with it and he didn't really want it anymore. And he, he did ride it a little bit, but he... Uh, he found there were problems with it and he, he wasn't really the kind of mechanical type and he wasn't really interested in trying to get it fixed, he just wanted to ride it. So um, he sold it to me and I kept it and uh, you know, since his passing it has been my plan to get this bike up and running properly and he passed away in 2013, uh, really doesn't seem that long ago. That's oil. I think that is enough, I think, but don't quote me. Right, nothing coming out of there. Can you see anything coming out from under the bike at all? Right, so let's put the, get the um, kickstart back on and give it a few rotations, shall we? There are plenty of parts I need for this bike, unfortunately. A lot of them are very difficult to get hold of. Um, so yeah, I've got to make make do with what I currently have. Um, that brake caliper is the same as what you'd find on an RD one two five DX. This is an RS one two five DX, as you can see on the fuel tank. Oh, that sounds really good. And it comes back up nicely. There we go. Steve, eat your heart out. That is really nice. That sounds lovely. And if we can... Hang on, put my finger in the top of the spark plug. Yeah, there's definitely compression. Mm. 
and get my thumb on there somehow. Yeah, I can, it's definitely compression, so that's good. Oh. That sounds really good, really good. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do, um, one thing I do need to do, where's that, uh, yeah, there it is. This, um, let's put the oil can back lid back on. Oh, don't spill it. Um, one thing I need to try and do is get this metal bracket replaced because um, it's been butchered, as you can see. Um, I don't know why. Maybe this is the wrong coil. Uh, it's very possible because you can just, with the 125s and such, you can change all of it. Um, so when I took when I got this bike, the this sits up underneath the fuel tank up there, and I'll see the and no, not obviously because not all of you know. Um, this comes down, goes onto the top of the spark plug in here, and you've got your wire to go into the loom. So what I would like to do is try and get some power into this bike at some point. Um, the loom is around somewhere. Um, I have to dig it out, see if I find it. Um, I'll put this bolt back in uh, once I've lined it up. Um, actually, I'm not going to bother with the, the the brake caliper. Or should I? Let me know if you want to see this removed. Uh, just put a comment in the, in the comment section. Normally where it goes. Um, yeah, let me know if you want to see if this piston will come out. Um, what was it I was going to say about? Um, yeah, I need to sort out the exhaust because it's the wrong one. Um, need to try and make it fit. Uh, I need to clean it up as well. Um, I'll give you a quick walk around because the camera is sat down at the moment on a big roll of paper. Like that. Use that for wiping stuff, do stuff down. But yeah, I need to get new shock absorbers. This needs a good clean up, even though it's the wrong one. This is off an RXS 100. Uh, need to get a rear, rear mud guard. A lot of the stuff you can't get in the UK anymore. You can only get it from abroad. Sabres with the front mud guard. I'm running out of battery, by the way. So I'll try and make this short. Uh, there are parts for the rear end. The sprocket is set. Chain sprocket, rear wheel sprocket, final drive sprocket. That one needs to come off. Uh, which means I have to get this off again. I need the outer casing for this. That is an earth. Um, yeah, the choke I managed to sort out. Um, I managed to straightenish the bar inside and it's made of brass. So let's keep your eyes off. Um, this here is what I need to measure the outside of this for the cone filter. Um, I have a spark plug, brand new one, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, it's coming along and I still need to repair the seat, which means I need a welder. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been Hooked on Classics.